So my first reaction to this was, okay, this can't be true. And then my second reaction was, wait a minute, if this is true, it actually explains a lot. Hey guys, it's Adele, and today I want to talk to you about the personality test I just took on Jordan Peterson's website, understandmyself.com. As most of you know by now, I am a self-improvement junkie. I'm also a huge fan of Dr. Jordan Peterson's. Uh, I actually saw one of his Bible lectures this summer in Toronto, and um, I'm actually going to talk a bit about how I got into uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson's work and why it appeals so greatly to me. So if you're here just for the personality test results, there'll be a link for you to skip to that below this video. And if you're ready for a long story, just hang on. Now I think as we get into the test results, we're going to start to see why somebody like me would be drawn to uh, the work of Dr. Jordan Peterson. But there's a lot that I kind of want to explain. This has been a long time coming. I have a lot of uh, fans and people who watch my videos from way back who know me from some of my Manosphere posts on forums, comments I've made on Manosphere related videos, and I know it's kind of weird for a woman to be interested in it as much as I am, so I'd like to explain that right now. A surprising percentage of my audience is male, uh, I think partially because of that, um, and that's unusual for a woman who's not specifically talking about male related topics or who isn't, you know, showcasing her body in all of her videos. I like to think it's because I have a message that even if I'm not coming right out and saying certain things, people get a vibe from me that they can resonate with and they can also read between the lines on a lot of the video topics that I've made so far. So I think that there are three main reasons why I got so involved in a lot of Manosphere literature. Um, specifically related to uh, pickup artists, men's rights activists, MGTOW, um, all of it. So one of the first reasons is that I have always been interested uh, more in intellectual pursuits than anything else ever since I was a kid. Um, I was born with uh, a higher than average IQ. Both of my brothers also have a higher than average IQ. And I learned to read from a very young age. So um, I did play with dolls and Barbies and babies, um, but I was also really interested in reading about science, psychology, history, philosophy, and that really kind of separated me from uh, the other little girls growing up. I also grew up way before uh, the politically correct culture uh, thing came in. I like to have uncomfortable intellectual conversations with people to learn more about the nature of humanity and the meaning of life and that was something that, uh, you know, didn't really ingratiate me to my peers. The kind of conversations that I found people having on the Manosphere really appealed to me. And while there was something about it that kind of felt like, you know, this is something for the guys and I really shouldn't be here, um, I still was so into the information that, I mean, I would lurk these forums, the videos, Reddit, any, anywhere I could get this information, and it just really helped me stay grounded and balanced in my understanding of the relationship between the sexes and the truth about human nature. So that brings me to the second point, you know, talking about uh, being different from my peers. I have been rejected by women my entire life. And I know that might sound strange, but let me explain. So um, the ultimate, you know, the very first rejection was from my own mother. My mother was raised with traditional conservative values. And looking back, I am so grateful that I was raised the way I was. I know a lot of people don't get the kind of childhood that I had when I was growing up, even though it was racked with poverty and, you know, abuse from my mother. Um, you know, she taught me how to cook, how to um, keep a household, how to be a gracious guest, how to be, uh, you know, an inviting host. She taught me manners and uh, social graces and the whole irony of this is that these things are really important for her to be able to point at in her children and be proud of, probably because her actual life was a complete mess. She 
was so upset about her parents having um, shipped her here uh, when she was 16 years old, uh, essentially by herself. She felt very abandoned by them and she really disliked her parents and I think she kind of wanted to get back at them on some level. My mother ended up getting involved with these crowds of women who were career, welfare, single mothers and they would go to these parties and they would bring her along. And my mother had been told by her grandparents way when she was very young to stay away from the black kids. Right? So I feel like that was part of what was driving her when she got to Canada and she was just so angry at her parents. You know, she's like, well, I'll show you. She got knocked up by my dad, um, who promptly skipped town shortly thereafter. And uh, my mother was Indian. She had fairer skin than me. She had very thin, straight uh, hair. And so eventually she was stuck, stuck with this child who didn't look like her and reminded her of the mistakes she'd made and the man who she grew to resent and hate. You know, she felt like my father ruined her life and um, so eventually, um, as I started getting older, um, I started getting, you know, curlier hair, I started getting darker skin and I, this is just my theory. I feel like that played into it. Um, but she would definitely say things to me like, oh, you look like your dad, oh, you're just like your father. My mother said and did a lot of really unnecessarily cruel and evil things um, to me and my brothers. But when she would say things to me like that, I would think, well, you're the one who chose him. Like, how does that have anything to do with me? You know, and um, I didn't let them affect me on an intellectual level, but on an emotional level, that kind of rejection gets to you. And uh, the girls in school would have reject rejected me too. Um, I remember numerous times when the parents would leave, whether it was at a party or if it was at summer camp, um, and the girls would form like a semicircle around me and just like make comments about me. They'd be like, why are you doing that? And they would say things like, why are you wearing that? Haven't you heard of jeans before? Because I used to wear these like, do you know those sweatsuit outfits? Those like matching sweatpants and like sweat top that you could get from like Zellers back in the day? Like I would just wear those every day. Like I didn't care. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know how to look cute. And so they would criticize me. Eventually I did end up having some girlfriends, um, a couple of good girlfriends. Um, but they were, one of them was, like she was kind of awkward and odd herself and she was really smart. So we would talk about life and I would write things and I remember she would read them and, and criticize me on them and we had a great friendship um, while we were kids uh, and the other one was more athletic so she was kind of a tomboy and she was always down to go like jump fences and start fires with me and stuff like that. So not only did I experience rejection from my mother but I also was under a condition called en enmeshment with my mother. And what that basically means is when a parent puts their child into a role outside of being a kid. So essentially, myself, uh, mostly because I was the eldest, but also my brothers as well, we got put into, you know, we couldn't just be kids. We got put into the role of provider, of protector, of co-parent, of husband. We were therapists, maids, cooks, housekeepers, all catering to my mother and her hysterical emotions. So on one hand, you know, I developed um, I almost played the role that a husband would play in a relationship. You know, you have a family and you have two adults in the home. So you have, you know, two voices of reason that keep each other in check, right? And there was no one keeping my mother in check. She was the head of the household and what she said went, even though we knew that she was crazy and she was unreliable and she was unfair and uh, very emotional. So many times I had to be the voice of reason and I had to keep my mother in line. Sometimes it worked and other times, you know, she just destroyed me because ultimately she had way more power than me. I began to notice that uh, in other situations, 
like in school or with friends or at work, that I would react to women in that manner, where it was like if they showed a hint of their emotion going negative, I would have a reaction like I had done something wrong and I had to fix it with them and I had to uh, supplicate myself to them and I had to serve them and make them better. And it was leading to me being taken advantage of by my friends, being treated badly by other women. And I know that a lot of men experience this same dynamic with women. I can't imagine how challenging it must be to experience that fear um, you know, that sense of obligation, that enmeshment causes, you know, that's where a lot of the uh, white knights come from. That sense that you are responsible for their happiness in that moment and it's up to you to fix it. Combining that with sexual attraction, I, I'm, I can't imagine how difficult that must be. So I feel like those are kind of three main reasons why manosphere literature and information tends to resonate so strongly with me. Um, another one is that I suffered from severe social anxiety. I grew up uh, looking very nerdy, very geeky for a very long time. I wasn't interested in boys or dating till much, much later than most women from what I've heard. I used to be so uncomfortable in any social situation that if someone even just said hi to me, I could start crying. I was that uncomfortable. I somehow came across some pickup material. And I was searching forums for a problem that I was having with my boyfriend at the time, which was him justifying his relationships with women. And, you know, he was best friends with his ex and all kinds of ridiculousness that, you know, I put up with when I was in my early 20s. So I was looking up these things like, can men and women be just friends? And that was kind of like the edge of the rabbit hole for me. And then I just got deeper and deeper into this stuff. I have a natural curiosity about human nature. I want to know everything I can know about why we do the things we do, uh, why I am the way I am, why you are the way you are. I am fascinated by this and I never get tired of researching it. And you know what's really funny is around that time, I was selling makeup at the mall and uh, I was on commission. I was using tips that I learned from Neil Strauss and David D'Angelo to game women at work and sell more products. I became the number one saleswoman in my division and I didn't let a single person in on my secret. Until today. So add on to all of this the fact that I have been dealing with and annoyed by social justice warriors for over 30 years of my life. Oh yes, that's right, being a visible minority with a single mother on welfare um, in Canada, myself and my brothers and my family were subjects of their pity many, many times, and there was always something about it that felt off to me, and I never liked these people, and I couldn't figure out why. So if you take all that into consideration, that can kind of give you an idea about why um, Jordan Peterson's work uh, appealed to me so greatly. Now let's have a look at my personality test results, and we'll talk about those too. So the test analyzes the big five aspect scale. So these are the, the five traits of agreeableness, conscientiousness, extroversion, eroticism, and openness. Um, and there are a couple things that I knew going into this. Uh, one of them is that um, I know I'm aware that I have a strong personality. I've kind of always had a strong personality, even when I was very young. But I also had an idea how I was, I would fall in some of these categories, and on some of them I was completely wrong, and then on others, like I knew that I was a certain way, but to see just how far I was into certain traits uh, was shocking to me, and um, I will say it, it actually really opened my eyes to some of the things that I've struggled with in life. and. Um, also help me appreciate some of my strengths.
so yeah there you go uh, thank you so much if you've made it this far in this video. I have never publicly talked about this before. I'm not selling makeup to women and I don't have social anxiety, but I'm still out there reading like you wouldn't believe, watching videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.